Okay, so let's walk you through iMovie, which is a free video editing uh, piece of software that comes pre-installed on all Macs or MacBooks. Uh, so if you have a, a Mac laptop or an iMac at home, you should already have iMovie installed. We have it installed in all the labs, uh, and it's also in the common labs in Old Main uh, for you to use. So. Uh, if you have experience with an advanced editing platform like Adobe Premiere Pro or Final Cut, feel free to use that. You don't have to use iMovie, but for the rest of y'all who are just starting with video editing, um, I highly suggest you use iMovie in one of the labs or on your own device. Uh, so when you start iMovie, you're going to be on this projects page and you're going to want to create new. You can see I already have a video there, but I want to create new and I want to create new movie. Um, so I already have some video clips in here for that other project I was working on. You're probably going to have nothing here if you've never opened iMovie before. Um, so I'm just going to click new event that will give me uh, an option to have the blank screen like you'll have. So you'll want to click import media and you'll want to already have your video files uploaded to your computer. So I have um, a folder here called Zion, which is full of video clips and an interview from um, a project over the summer with my Study in America group. So you can see I have a ton of video clips. Um, so iMovie has now selected all of those and brought them into this event folder right here. Now you notice when you hover over these, I can actually preview it um, there in the screen or if I hit play. I can play that as well. This is called scrubbing. Uh, so that's how you uh, select uh, whatever clips it is you want to use. Uh, so if you've read the instructions for the video assignment, you're gonna know you're required to go out and do an interview and the clip or the uh, finished product needs to be at least a minute. Um, so you can see here, I did a pretty long, or one of the students did a pretty long interview here. It's about seven and a half minutes. Uh, and let's break that down, uh, get rid of all the questions and only have it to where the answers uh, are really solid and tell a story to do that. So you saw I just drag and dr I dragged and dropped uh, this clip in here. This is the interview. Uh, and then there's this little slide bar here and that will advance it out so where you can actually see um, you have more space here so you can edit. First thing you'll notice is these audio clips are pretty low. So I'm going to drag that middle line there and I'm going to drag it up. So even at 400%, um, he's now just about where he needs to be. Okay. Um, the other thing I would advise you notice that he's pretty well uh, framed here. Uh, we might be able to crop this a little bit more. I'm not super happy that this bar is right behind him, but we wanted to get the cliff in the background. So um, first thing you'll want to do is go through and just start chopping down the interview. Uh, so I'm going to stop talking for just a second and I'm going to hit play so we can start here at the beginning. So I've moved the cursor back over to the beginning and let's start. Yeah, the Design Forever project actually its roots go clear back to 1929. Okay, so we see he does start right here. So now I'm gonna move my cursor there and I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna select this, select this option that says split clip. So that has now broken up these two clips into two. So I could get rid of that first clip and just start it right here. Yeah, the design forever project. Okay, so I didn't edit that as completely clean as I want. So you can see I can make that even bigger. So I can now go in here and see the exact starting point. Design forever. So that's a much cleaner starting point right there. So again, I'm going to split and then get rid of that. Then I can go back here and kind of drag this down a little bit. Design forever project. Actually, its roots go clear back to 1929 when a group of people here in the, at the Gateway Design National Park wanted to come up with a way to help, um, you know, enhance the visitor experience here. And so they started creating postcards and trail guides and different um, kinds of interpretive uh, uh, products that could be sold to the, the visitor and, 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 in, and in that sense enhance their experience. 
but also create a revenue source to to be able to help di uh, fund different projects in the park. And okay, so I'm going to stop it there because he's kind of rambling for a bit. Um, so again, I'm going to hit right click and split, and then um, I'm going to go to the next question and get his. So next we've evolved over the decades. Um, we became the Zion Natural History Association. So let's say that that was the next answer I wanted and this was the part I wanted to get out. I'm going to keep doing the same thing, right click and split clip, and then I could delete. And so now let me listen and see if that works. To, to be able to help di uh, fund different projects in the park. So we've evolved over the decades. Um, we became the Zion Natural History Association and for many, many years we uh, functioned as a natural history association, and then in the last few years, we uh, rebranded or re sort of recreated our nonprofit entity into the Forever Project for Zion, which um, encompasses not only the retailing of interpretive materials, but also the publishing of materials and also um, field programs such as Michael Plyler uh, directs for us and. And then uh, the much greater philanthropic um, initiative that we've now uh, begun for Zion National Park, where we're reaching out to the world to help, um, to, to really help um, ensure the future of this great place. Okay, so there's the end of that soundbite. You can see this already went kind of long. So um, let's just pretend I'm not going to do the rest because we're already at a minute 30, but that's how you would break down the interview. So you can see you just keep splitting it up into different clips to get rid of the things that you want, hit delete on those, uh, and then you'll put them together here. So now you notice this is going to be a split clip. So we've I'm sorry, that's a jump cut where it's going from him on camera to him on camera and there's an edit there. Now, Y'all may be used to seeing that because that's kind of the norm on YouTube uh, for video blogs, but we don't do this in video storytelling. So that will need to be one of the places we put our B-roll, which is um, these video clips here to be edited um, or to cover the interview portion. So now if you've read the instructions, you know you need at least five um, quality B-roll shots. And hopefully they're relevant to whatever the person is talking about. So let's start like right here and let's see if I can find a logical starting point. To the, the visitor and, 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 in, and in that sense enhance their experience, but also create a revenue source to, to be able to help di uh, fund different projects in the park. So we be Okay, well how about I just start right here. So um, you can see I can select a small portion of this and then just drag that down right there. And then you want to get rid of the audio for that. So now if I look at this clip, uh, fun different projects in the park. So we've evolved over the decades. Um, we became the Zion. Okay. Um, you don't want your B-roll clips to be much longer than four seconds. Four seconds is kind of industry standard, um, three to four seconds. So, um, make sure that they're somewhere around that uh, range. So here I'm going to grab another clip right here. Um, and if I just want to do all five of them right here, I could just keep going because he's talking about the revenue models and how the visitor group helps in the park. So I'm just going to keep grabbing. Again, make sure you're bringing the audio levels down on the B-roll so that it doesn't interrupt. That's called natural sound, and you can either leave it really light or really low, uh, or you can just bring it down. Um, and let's actually show some of the park now. So here's this clip. I'll just get about four seconds of it. I'm gonna drag that over. And then here's one more. So you want to select the best four seconds or so of each clip. Um, so now I have these five clips here. And so if we keep watching. But also create a revenue source to, to be able to help di uh, fund different projects in the park. So we've evolved over the decades. Um, we became
became the Zion Natural History Association. And for many, many years, we uh, functioned as a natural history association. And then in the last few years, we uh, rebranded or re sort of recreated our nonprofit entity into the Forever Project. So you can see my B-roll doesn't exactly match up with what he's talking about. Um, if I was really doing this for submission somewhere, I would not be using these clips. This is just an example. Um, I would not be going through this history. I'd be picking more interesting parts, but you get the idea. So that's how you um, edit down interview clips as you bring it down into your timeline. You find where you want to start, hit split clip. Um, and then find where you want to end, split the clip again, and then delete the portions that you're not using. Um, when it comes time for the B-roll to be added, you simply can just find your uh, portion of it right here and then drag and drop that down uh, to the timeline, to the spot where you want it to cover. Now you can also adjust it down here. Um, so you can see you can do that as well. Um, and let's see. Let me go over a few more things with y'all. Um, you see up here, there are tools to help you. Um, so I mentioned that I don't necessarily like the cropping here. Um, Here's the crop option on that. And if I hit crop to fill, it now gives me uh, an option to crop this down. So I might maybe try like right there. And I do like that a lot better. Um, let's actually crop just a little bit more. Still utilizing the rule of thirds. Okay, I like that because you still get his hands in the shot, but it's still rule of thirds. Um, now you notice I only have this clip selected. So when I go back here, it's going to be the original cropping. Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, a couple of other things, if you have a little bit shaky video, um, you can select this option right here with the camera with the shake on it, and you can hit stabilize shaky video. Now this video was shot on a tripod, so it's not going to be shaky, uh, but don't go much past this 33%. What it does is it actually zooms in a little bit to try and stabilize in the middle uh, as you're doing that. So it should help stabilize uh, if you have a slightly shaky video. Um, you have audio options in terms of eliminating background noise. You've got some color correction, uh, things along those lines. So feel free to play around with the tools up here. Just please don't go crazy with the uh, audio effects or the clip effects um, to add a bunch of crazy looks to the video. We want this to look like something you'd be proud uh, to uh, present to someone. So one last thing you have to do is you have to have a title of some sort in the video at the beginning. Um, so if you click on titles up here, uh, you can see we have a list or we have a, a long uh, range uh, or a big range of titles available for you. So I just tend to like this kind of centered one. Um, and if I drag that down, now I have this option. Um, oh. Let me go back here and then I can start, if I can spell correctly. Now once I type that, you can see I can go up here and change the font. Um, so I like this DIN condensed and I want it right aligned and I want it bigger. Let me see if I can actually go bigger than that. There we go. Don't want it outlined. Okay, so uh, if you want to edit, you just double click within that. And let's say I wanted to change the um, color to red or something like that. Okay, um, so now I have a title that's there. Design Forever Project. Okay, I could also title him. So I would look for something that's called a lower third. Um, I would look for one of these where the lower third actually works. So maybe like, uh, let's, let's try this one. So now I want this on top of the video. So if I started it right there, you'll now notice that I have options and I can't remember this man's name. Um, so let's just pretend it's John Smith. Now you can see this doesn't look all that great, but then it adds in the kind of uh, gradient bar behind Design it. Design Forever Project, actually its roots go clear back to 1920. 
and you can be consistent with the fonts you use. So you can double click on that and then go and I use this DIN condensed and then double click the bottom DIN condensed. And so now my fonts on the title Actually, and on his rude. super so back to uh, is the same. When um, so that's about it. iMovie is super easy to use. It's very user friendly. Um, you'll get the hang of it uh, very quickly as you do it. All you need to know is to cut down your interview clips. You just right click and hit select clip um, to our split clip to split those into separate clips. And then you can get rid of the spaces where you don't want. And then you have to go in and select your B-roll, drag it down, drag the clip you want down uh, into the timeline, place it over where you want to uh, have that B-roll and you can move these anywhere you want. Um, so I could break up those, something like that. Um, once you're done, you're gonna wanna click on this uh, option up here. That's the share option. Um, you're gonna wanna click on file you're going to want to give it a name so i could call this zion um, i want it in 1080p and i want it high okay um, you don't have to select best because that's going to create a massive massive uh, video file so just go ahead and click high on that hit next and it'll save it to the uh, desktop and then you can upload to youtube from there